If you look closely at the healing ministry of Jesus, you'll notice something that he does that helped the people to be led to their moment of healing. And I want to talk about the moment of faith. You see, there comes a moment when their faith is at its fullest, and you need to learn to seize that moment so that you can be equipped to minister God's healing power. I'm going to be teaching on this edition of Spirit Church about the moment of faith, and this is a continuation of my series, How to Heal the Sick. But before we get into this lesson, Stephen Moctezuma is here with me. He's going to lead you in some anointed worship, and then we're going to get right into this lesson here. It's Stephen Moctezuma. I was ministering to a woman in Northern California who was in a wheelchair. She had been in that wheelchair for quite some time. So I'm preaching on God's power to heal the sick and I'm actually giving keys to the healing ministry much like I'm doing in this series. And as I'm ministering to the people, I just see this woman in her wheelchair and she's seated about the third row. And I could not continue my sermon because I felt the Holy Spirit stirring me to talk to this woman. So. In the middle of my message, I stopped teaching on what I was teaching on at that moment, and I began to speak life into that woman's situation. I remember telling her something to the effect of, you know, a lot of people would say I'm cruel for telling you that you could be healed. A lot of skeptics would view that as me dangling false hope in front of your face in order to try to stir emotion in a crowd. But I told her in boldness, because the Holy Spirit had led me to do this, 
I told her that you're going to walk out today without that wheelchair. Now, it was a moment that was inspired by the Holy Spirit, but I saw faith in her eyes. There was something about the way she was listening intently to the word that I knew deep within my spirit that this woman was ready to receive her miracle. And so I made that declaration in faith, finished up the message, and prayed for her after the service. By the end of that service, she was, in fact, walking. And in fact, just maybe a couple weeks later, she was dancing at a wedding. She sent us a video from her home, walking around her house, and God had restored her. Even some injury that had been on her body was visibly shrunk, and the doctors were amazed at how rapidly she was healing. So the healing power of God came in that moment. There was another man, or another individual in a wheelchair that I ministered to in the Midwest. This man was paralyzed on his left side completely. He had been paralyzed for several years, and he was in a wheelchair. He could not walk. He could not move. He had trouble feeling in specific parts of his body on his left side. And I remember the service had just begun, and usually the way I start a service is the worship will go, I'll come out, lead a prayer to open up the service, then let people go back to their seats. But in that break between the worship and the start of the message, as the people were continuing to their seats, the Lord pointed out that family to me. And the wife, who was wheeling her husband up to the front, looked at me and said, can you pray for him? She wasn't close enough to the stage to where I could hear her, but I could read her lips. She's asking, can you pray for him? And I remember I was going to send them back to their seat and pray for them after the service because there's a certain order to how I do ministry. And I have to do it orderly because that's, that's, I believe, how God blesses it. But I also have to be obedient to the voice of the Holy Spirit spontaneously. So this woman brings her husband up and she told me, will you pray for him? And I was this close to just sending her back to her seat. And as they're on their way back, the Holy Spirit again stirred me. He said, don't you let that woman get back to her seat. You pray for that man right now. And so in faith, I told them, that man is coming out of that wheelchair today, and he's going to walk, and we're all going to see it. The crowd was stirred with faith, and I was thinking to myself, I sure hope I heard God on this one. And so she brings up this man, paralyzed, couldn't walk, couldn't move hardly, hardly any feeling. And we begin to pray for this man. And as we pray for his legs, I was praying for his legs first. I'm praying for his legs and he began to kick his leg up out of that wheelchair. And with each time he kicked his leg, the people were amazed and began to praise the Lord. And so eventually this man is walking back and forth across that stage for the first time in years. His wife is in tears and Jesus received the glory for that healing. But there was a moment of faith. Another instance, I was on Facebook, and believe it or not, somebody commented, please pray for me. I need a healing. I believe that you can pray for me through Facebook, and I'll be healed. And again, I saw faith in that moment. I didn't even pray for them verbally. I wrote back a comment, receive your healing in Jesus' name. That person within minutes commented back that they had been healed of their ailment because they stepped out in faith. It was a moment of faith. You see, in the healing ministry, as you minister God's healing power, you're going to see opportunities and moments that you have to seize. There are rivers of God's healing power that flow. There are streams that come but for a moment. And you have to be sensitive enough to the Spirit to recognize and read the moment and recognize and read the faith in the people. You see, in Matthew chapter 9, verse number 22, the scripture tells us very plainly what it was that caused people to be healed. Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be encouraged. Your faith has made you well. Again, in the book of Luke, this time in chapter number 18, verse number 42, we see something else very similar. And Jesus said, All right, receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. Romans chapter 10, verse 17 tells us, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Now, in context, that scripture in Romans is talking about the hearing of the gospel message, stirring faith to receive salvation. But the principle can also apply to healing in that when you hear a truth, it inspires faith within the soul to receive that truth and manifest it in the material world. You see, if you can believe for it in your spirit, it can be manifested in your reality but there has to be the moment of faith where you seize it. 
Now in Mark chapter 6, verses 5 through 6, we see that Jesus could do no miracles. Why? Because the people were unbelieving. They had no faith. In Luke chapter 8, verse 43 through 44, we find that a touch healed a woman. In Luke chapter 7, verses 2 through 10, we find that the Lord sent a word to the centurion's servant. Think about the blind man who was healed when Jesus took mud, raised it to his mouth, spit in it, and put it in the man's eyes. Now, I don't know about spitting in mud, unless you're really led of the Holy Spirit, don't do it. But Jesus, led perfectly by the Spirit, did something that to us seemed rather odd. I believe it was a reference to his power over creation, but just as God breathed life into the dust of the earth, so I believe Jesus spit life into that mud and healed this man. So I think it was a parallel to creation. Whatever it was that Jesus was doing or trying to communicate, the point is that it was a touch for a woman, it was the word for the servant, and it was mud for a blind man. Either way, what Jesus did is he worked with the faith that the individual had. Now, I've been in services where the minister will get up and they'll just right away start trying to pray for the sick. But if the people's faith is not present, there is no sickness that is going to be healed. It's just the truth. Now, I understand that there are those who go out into the streets and minister, and I've done it myself, and they lay hands on the sick, and that's powerful when that is done. But even those moments are led by the Holy Spirit and organized by God. My point is simply that you have to be able to discern faith in someone and capture that faith and minister in a way that they're going to be able to receive it. So I'll give you another example. I was up, I think it was in the Redlands in near, Calif uh, near, near Los Angeles. And so I drove out to the Redlands. The place was packed. They had bused people in from all over the place. The place was so packed that people couldn't even get inside. They had to set up chairs all outside of the parking lot. They almost filled up the parking lot with seats. It was a powerful, powerful draw that had been on that service. But I went in there, and I remember I ministered and taught and taught and taught and taught. And at first, where I felt faith, the more I taught, the more I felt the faith of the people dwindling. And I thought this was odd because I said, Lord, the scripture says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Why is it then that the more I teach, the more I talk, the less I feel faith in the room, the more the atmosphere changes to one of doubt? And I couldn't figure this out until later. I realized that I had missed the opportunity. I had failed to seize the moment of faith and I had talked past their ability to receive. Now, I'm not saying that in a condescending way, but the truth is that people reach a moment where their faith is full and you have to reach out and grab right then and there. You have to, in that moment, stir that faith and then seize it as soon as the opportunity presents itself. And this is only by the Holy Spirit. People ask me, how do you know when you're being led by the Holy Spirit? How do you know the voice of God? Well, I asked the question right back as an analogy, which is, how would you explain sight to someone who was born blind? How would you explain sound to someone who was born deaf? You see, your senses, though you experience them, cannot be described to someone who themselves does not experience that sense. In the same way, I cannot explain to you, I cannot describe adequately with words how the voice of God sounds or what the voice of God sounds like in any given situation. All I can tell you is that it's a different sense. There's something deep within you that you know, that you know, that you know that something is taking place. And so the way you find this sense is by number one, reading your word daily. Number two, being in prayer constantly. And number three, being aware of the presence of God in every moment of every day. And when you walk in those three things, what you'll notice begin to happen is your spirit sense grows stronger. Your spirit sense becomes more keen and you're able to sense things like those moments to seize those opportunities and help people receive their healing. So don't minister beyond their moment of faith. Don't miss the fullness of faith. Instead, work with them where they are. Don't teach theology when you're trying to minister healing to a new convert. Give them an analogy. Give them a story. Jesus often told parables and stories. Why? Because it helped to relate to the person he was ministering to. He did not go, for the most part, to the crowds, quoting chapters and chapters and chapters of Scripture, especially to Gentiles. What he did is he told parables. He told stories. He used agriculture, and he used different uh, structures of society as examples in which he would place his stories that proved his points or demonstrated his truth. And in the same way, we must work to relate to the ones 
to whom we are ministering healing. And so, look for the moment of faith when you're ministering God's healing power. Watch the person. Don't just go in there and have a template or a system of how you want to minister to the sick. Don't go in there with the same point one, two, and three. Go in there being ready to be led by the Holy Spirit, equipped with God's Word, discerning of the moment, and sense where God is leading you to minister to that one individual. And as you seize the moment of faith, you're going to notice that miracle after miracle follows you wherever you go. You're going to notice, you know, and I'm not saying this, please don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not bragging, but you don't know how many people tell me, I've had so many pastors lay hands on me to receive my healing, and it never happened for me. And I'm telling you, this key, I'm giving you a powerful key. This key right here is something that most believers don't know about. It's finding the moment of faith. And this, I believe, is one of the ways you're going to increase the potency of the healing power upon your life. That is it for the lesson. I want to pray with you now. I want to pray that God would help you to discern the moment of faith. And then I want to pray with you for your healing. Come on, let's believe. Stretch your hands toward mine in faith and believe that God will touch you now. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for that one receiving this prayer now. And I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would give us eyes and ears that are discerning. Help us, Lord, to recognize the moment of faith that we may seize it and manifest the miraculous. In the precious name of Jesus, give us discernment, Lord. And Father, I pray for those believing for a miracle in their body. I pray that healing river begin to flow now. In the name of Jesus. There's somebody watching me. You're hearing me. There's an issue with your lungs. Uh, you have trouble with your breathing. And I just, you're sensing like a warm heat go through you right now. The timing that you're watching this video is perfect. It's the Lord's moment to heal you. And even right now, I can feel this, um, that, 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 that issue with your lungs, you're going to find that it's, it's changing and there's a miracle manifest in your body. Go back to your doctor, have him check you. I believe the Lord's healing you. Father, I thank you for the miracles that are happening all over. Lord, I pray for deaf ears to be open in Jesus' name. I pray for blind eyes to be open. I, I can sense a tremendous anointing right now. Lord, I thank you for the healing power of God flowing. And I give you the glory, Jesus, for every miracle. Every miracle. Lord, your healing touch destroys the power of sickness over our lives. We bind sickness now in the name of Jesus. And I want you to say it because you agree. Say amen. Well, I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you. We're praying for you. I always say that because I always mean it. If you like information on how you can join the Spirit family, simply visit the website at the bottom of your screen. Now, Spirit Church membership is 100% free. What you're going to get every single week is a brand new, fresh, anointed teaching in your email inbox every Sunday morning, and you can reply to that email for prayer support from our ministry staff. On top of that, you're going to be joining the Spirit family, which consists of over 3,000 members worldwide. Wide. Well, I want to read your comments now. Your comments here I'm reading are from last week's teaching, which was How to Heal the Sick, Part 3, Defeating Doubt. Here's what some of you had to say about that message. The first commenter writes, I always feel blessed with your teachings and preaching. Thank you so much, Brother David. I thank God for making your ministry known to me. I'm praying that one day I could attend your church. God bless you and your ministry. By the way, we have some information on that. Not starting a church, but for those of you who don't know, we're in the middle of a campaign to build a brand new TV studio, and that's where you'll be able to attend in person. There's some details on that coming up at the end of the broadcast here. The next commenter writes, I'm blessed by listening to you once again. Yes, I was facing doubt. God is so timely to speak to me through you. You are so anointed, man of God. Blessings all the way from Pakistan. Joseph writes, thank you and may God bless you, Brother David. Your teachings are a blessing each week. They help me in my life, and they help me to take my next great step in my faith. Scott Warren writes, Praise God for you, Brother David. This message really touched me. Also, Stephen, praise God for you, brother. Amazing song. I love it. It's been a song that's constantly on my heart. For those of you who haven't done so yet, I recommend you check out Stephen Moctezuma's worship playlist here on Encounter TV. And the final commenter writes, Praise be to God. 
Thank you for another teaching that has stirred my faith. I always feel the presence of God and the power of the Holy Spirit in every teaching that you share. I am claiming to be free from doubt. May the Almighty God continue to empower your life and your ministry to win more souls. I can't wait for next week's lesson. God bless. Well, I know that that is what makes this channel unique, is that people can feel the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Really, this is the Holy Spirit's channel. If you look behind me, you'll see that logo of our ministry. The logo consists of two symbols, the fire and the dove. Both symbolize the person of the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to talk to you about what we're doing as a ministry to expand. Now, don't turn me off yet. Some of you, you've never gone this far in the video, but I want you to stick around. You're watching this for a reason. It's not by accident. We are right now in the middle of a campaign to raise 1,000 new $30 a month supporters. That would bring in $30,000 extra monthly for the ministry. That was the campaign. 1,000 was our goal. Look at how far we are now. Let's finish this up. Let's get this done so that we can start looking and for places to lease. We actually already are looking for a place to lease. Um, so get signed up. That's where we are in our campaign. And that monthly cost is going to help with the lease. It's going to help with the insurance. It's going to help with the maintenance. There is a lot of monthly expenses that go into a building. So sign up to become a $30 a month supporter. What we're going to do with that facility is really simple. We're going to do more broadcasts more often in higher quality. We're going to be able to live broadcast from the studio on a regular basis. We're going to build a place where a studio audience can come in. This means that you can come in and listen to the tapings live. Stephen Moctezuma will do worship. I'll teach a lesson and we'll actually be able to lay hands on you when we pray at the end. So I know it's going to be a powerful tool. It's basically a world evangelism center. And I need your help with building this. It's also going to enable us to do more events more often in more places. So quite simply, what is our why? We want to win more souls. How do we do that? Our ministry wins more souls through events and media. And this new ministry facility is going to help us do more events and more media in higher quality than ever before. So if you sign up to become a $30 a month supporter today, I will send you a copy of either Carriers of the Glory or 25 Truths About Demons and Spiritual Warfare. That will be our initiation gift to say thank you. Sign up today if you're watching this on the YouTube app. Just wait until the very end of this video. There'll be a red button that you can click. It will take you right to where you can donate. If you're watching this on the app, wait for the video to end. The button will appear. If you're watching this anywhere else, use the information at the bottom of the screen. Do that today. Help us finish up this campaign. Well, that is it for this edition of Spirit Church. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, help me win souls by spreading the gospel through events and media. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.